Thanks for coming and joining me on the video. Hopefully by the end of it, you would have hopefully learned um, the basics of the Project Logical Editor and you should be able to somewhat understand how it works. So I'm gonna try my best to explain this. I'm not a 100%, 100% a master with it, but I know enough uh, to build lots of different commands. So let's go over to the project window. Now, if you don't know what the Project Logical Editor is, um, you can get to it by going to Track Visibility Agents, clicking on it, and at the bottom you'll see Project Logical Editor. Essentially, it's the most powerful tool of Cubase, and it allows you to take all the different functionality that's built into it, for example, selecting tracks, arming tracks to record, disabling, lengthening MIDI, shortening MIDI, anything you can think of that you do with Cubase on a day-to-day -day basis, you can basically build your own commands that take those things and you know merge them together to make the an ultimate workflow. For example, you could make a button that selects only instrument tracks in the project, add them to a folder, rename them, colorize them, and then route them to their own group boss and then send them to an effects end. You can do that all from one button. Anything you can think of, you could build it pretty much with the PLE. Now, it can be a little bit intimidating at first um, because there's not really, uh, the last time I checked, there wasn't really any decent documentation on the Project Logical Editor uh, and how you use it and how everything's explained. So um, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to help you out in this video. When you open this thing up, it's going to be by default set to transform mode. And the way I like to explain the PLE is the top section here, the event target filters section, is where we're going to input data to tell Cubase what to look for. And we can either be very vague or we can be very specific about what we want it to look at. So we could tell it to look at an instrument track or we could tell it to look at instrument tracks that only have events on. We can tell it to look at MIDI. Um, this is where we basically just input, you know, this is what we want you to look at Cubase. Now, the event transform action section here at the bottom, uh, this is where we're going to input data to tell Cubase to perform an action based on what we've told it to look at. So that could be lengthening MIDI, shortening MIDI, moving MIDI. It could be disabling tracks, hiding tracks, enabling tracks, um, activating record, monitor, mute, anything really you, that's presented uh, in the event transform actions, you'll be able to have some control over uh, and, you know, build your commands. Now for Pro 12 users, or just Cubase 12 users, um, you have this additional menu at the bottom, which is really, really, really useful. It's the pre and post commands. So what we can do is click on one of these plus signs. We have four for each box. I'd like to see more uh, than just four in future updates. Um, but if you click on one of these, basically, Anything that you have access to in your key commands window, all the different uh, commands built into Cubase can be accessed from here and added before or after our PLE command is triggered. So that means we could tell Cubase to add a track. It would then carry out what we've told it to do here, which could be name it a certain way, color it a certain way, and then afterwards, we could be like, okay, now I want to add you to a folder and then add you to a group um, send or maybe add an effect send or something. So it's really useful having this. You're not going to have to deal with the key commands window as much and all and building your own custom macros because this takes away a lot of that pressure and makes it much easier to work with. Now at the bottom here, we have this little drop down menu and essentially the way I explain it is different mode. So at the moment it's in transform mode. So based on what we input and tell it what to do, uh, it's going to change something. Uh, we can delete stuff and you'll notice that this gets grayed out. So anything that we tell it to look at here, it's going to delete. Um, we can tell it to any anything that we you know input here to look at, it's going to select. 
or we can tell it to deselect. And with deselect, you also get the ability to use event transform actions as well, um, you know, and specify different things to do. If we put this on select, this will help me demonstrate to you some of the different uh, target filters and conditions. I won't cover all of them because there's a lot to go through, but I will mainly uh, focus on the condition types so you can get your heads around how they work and it will help you, you know, when you're playing around with the PLE. Now in the project here, I've added every single track type you can think of uh, that's available in Cubase. So tempo, signature, video, rulers, markers, arrangers, folder tracks, audio, instrument, MIDI, sampler, VCA, group bus, and effect bus. They've all been added in, and this will help me visually communicate across to you how um, you know this top section or how Cubase is looking at things, depending on what we input. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a filter. And under filter target, you'll notice there's a bunch of different things you can select. I'll cover a couple of these. I won't go into all of them. Um, but the first one we're going to look at is container type. Container type um, will allow us to select one of four uh, different parameters. Uh, we can select folder track, track, part, or event. Now, we're going to look at track, and I'll explain to you uh, what that essentially means. Um, but here we have different conditions. So we have equal unequal and all types. Equal is the condition you would use if you want Cubase to be super specific with what it's going to look for based on what's in the parameter here. Unequal means it's going to look for stuff that isn't listed in the parameter here and all types means it's just going to look for everything. It's going to ignore the parameter. So for example, if we set this to container type is equal to track, the classification of a track is essentially everything here in the project excluding folder tracks because they're in their own classification. So with this having been set to select, when I click apply, Cubase is going to look for anything that is a track and select it. And there you go, it's selected it all. Now if I change this to a folder track, Cubase is going to look through the entire project and select folder tracks. So if I hit apply, it selects the folder track. Now, if I change this to unequal, that means Cubase is going to look for everything that is not a folder track and select it. As you can see, it's now selected everything else that is not a folder track. And obviously, if we change this to track, it's going to do the same thing again, but it's going to select anything that is not classed as a track, which would be a folder track. Now you can search for parts and events as well. I won't cover those in this video because I want to just get the basics across first, but um, you can do things based on events if you wish, um, or parts. Now I'm going to change this to uh, media type. Now media type has the same conditions, um, but you'll notice in parameter one, we have a bunch more options. So we can do things based on audio tracks, MIDI tracks, automations, we can look at markers, transpose, arrangers, tempo, anything here, we have a little bit more flexibility with what we're telling Cubase to look at. Now, if I select MIDI track, which is what most of you are going to uh, use if you're building PLEs for your projects, um, MIDI includes three different things. It includes MIDI tracks, sampler tracks, and instrument tracks, so anything with MIDI. So if I click apply, you'll notice that it's selecting all of those in the project. Again, if we change this to unequal and parameter one is MIDI, anything that's not a MIDI track will be selected. Now let's say I want to, um, let's think, let's say we want to select all of the instrument tracks in our project, not the MIDI tracks, not the sampler tracks, we just want to select our instrument tracks. How would we do that? Well. We could add another condition, but first we need to set this to equal as MIDI. So that means Cubase is going to look through the project for the all types of MIDI track. But here you'll notice that um, with our instrument tracks, it has, you know, the name of them has instrument track in the title. So we could create another insert here and then use name. Now, how 
these conditions work for name are I'll demonstrate to you because it's a good way of showing how exact Cubase can be when you're using the equal condition. Now, if I just typed instrument track into parameter one and hit apply, Cubase is not going to do anything because I've typed everything in lowercase. Now, if I type it exactly as it's presented in the tracks, instrument track with a capital I and a capital T and hit apply, it's only selecting the one instrument track and not the other stuff. Why is that? Well, that's because it's only going to search for exactly what's input here. And you'll notice with these, they have a D in brackets in the title. And, you know, that's not included here. So it's only going to target exactly what I type in. So if I put that D in with the brackets and hit apply, you'll notice it selects them. But if I had the, the D is a lowercase, it's not going to select them. Super specific. And this has some very useful uh, applications. If I want Cubase to be a little bit more chill about how it looks for the word instrument track, I can select contains. And it doesn't matter if I type in instrument track all in lowercase or if I don't add you know, the extra text, anything that has the words instrument track in the title is going to get selected. Okay. Now, if we change this to contains not, again, it's it's the opposite of contains. So anything that doesn't contain the word instrument track, I want you to select it in the project as long as it's a MIDI track. So anything that's a MIDI track that doesn't contain the word instrument track, select it. And as you can see here, it's selected the MIDI track and the sampler track. Now, we obviously don't want to do that. We want to select instrument tracks. Now, what I want to move on to is uh, actually performing some event transform actions. So from down here, I'm going to select transform, and this will give us the option to do stuff to this instrument track selection that we've input. So if I add a new action, Action targets, again, there's many to choose from. Um, I'm going to look at track operation for this video. And under operation, you'll see that we have a bunch of different things. So we can tell it to arm for record, monitor, solo, mute, rewrite, all this other stuff. For the sake of this video, I'm going to select solo. Now, parameter one, there are three different options, enable, disable, and toggle. If it's enabled, it's going to turn something on. So if I hit apply now, it's going to search through the project for anything with the word instrument tracking, and then it's going to mute it. Oh, sorry, solo it. It's going to enable the solo. As you can see there, it's enabled solo on our instrument tracks. Now, if we change this to disable and click apply, it's going to turn it off for the instrument tracks. But it doesn't matter if I keep you know, pressing this, it's always going to keep turning it off. So the third function is a toggle function. So it's not only can it turn stuff on, but if you execute the command again, it's going to turn stuff off. So if I hit apply, it solos. If I hit it again, it'll unsolo. Now, toggle functions are really useful for when you're building certain commands, uh, but I would avoid using them personally if you're going to do anything that's uh, visibility related. So hiding tracks, showing tracks, showing tracks with events, hiding tracks with events. Um, because Cubase tends to not sort of like reset itself when you're using the toggle function. So you would have to add something in to reset it before another command uh, is executed. Otherwise, it just causes all kinds of mess. Trust me on that. But toggle functions are very useful and have their applications. With the knowledge that we have now, let's build a command uh, like we want to take all of the instrument tracks that are a certain color and we want to add them to a folder and then we want to add them to their own group in the mix or route them to a group. First of all, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to change the color of these to yellow, like so, because I only want to target my yellow instrument tracks. And from the top here, we are going to set the media type is equal to MIDI. And then the name contains the word instrument track. And then we're going to add another filter. 
and change this to color name is equal. And to the right here, you can either type in the color name if you know what it is, but if you don't, if you click to the right of the arrow, it'll actually bring up the color palette for the project. This is my own custom color palette. If you want to get it, it's in the link in the description below to the website. And then from here, we're going to select yellow because I'm wearing yellow today. And when we hit apply, it's not going to do anything because we've got this set to transform. What I want to do is set this to select because I only want Cubase to select those tracks. I don't want it to transform them. And then once it's selected them, we're going to use the post process command section to add them to a folder and then route them to their own group. So to do this, we click the plus sign. I'm going to type in move selected and this uh, will bring up move selected tracks to a new folder. And then below this, once it's added them to a folder, I then want it to route them to their own group. So I'm going to type in add to, and then from here we can go to add track to selected group channel. So that means when I hit apply, Cubase is going to look for anything that is a MIDI track. Then it's going to check if it contains the word instrument track. And if it does, it's going to check if it's yellow. And if it is yellow, then it's going to select it. Once it's selected it, it's then going to move it to a folder track. And then it's going to take those tracks and group them to their own bus. So when I hit apply now, just like that, Cubase has selected those two instrument tracks that are yellow, added them to a folder, and now it's prompting me to add them to a group. So let's just type in any old gibberish and go add track. And when we go over to the mixer here, you'll notice for those two uh, instrument tracks, it's routed them to our bus. So really, really useful. Now with the PLE, once you've built stuff like your own commands that you're happy with, you can save them as a preset. And this will you know, allow you to add them in either pre or post. So you can start getting quite complex uh, with how your PLE commands work. And you can build some pretty crazy workflow enhancing time saving stuff. But maybe we should leave those for other videos. Now, obviously, there's lots of stuff that I haven't covered in this. And if you want to contribute to the information or maybe correct me on a couple of things, be sure to leave them in the comments box below. Now, if you have found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, obviously, give it a thumbs down. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.